Good morning. Uh, I would like to describe here a new proposal for dark matter particles. The idea of dark matter started when Fritz Ficke, Swiss astronomer working in the USA, noticed in 1933 that velocities of stars at the edges of galaxies seem to be bigger than expected. He introduced the term dark matter. In the 70s, Vera Rubin, with, the, with her team, confirmed that in the Andromeda galaxy these velocities are indeed bigger than it should be expected from the known star content of the galaxy. We have now more confirmations of this effect, like measurements of velocity of stars in our galaxy, Milky Way, measurement of velocity of hydrogen gas far beyond the visible stars in rotating galaxies, spectacular collision of two galaxies in the bullet cluster, or matter content versus dark energy content from the cosmic microwave background. All of them point to the presence of dark energy. As we now estimate the energy density in our universe, it is on average one proton mass per cubic meter, it is divided into 5% of visible matter, 28% of dark matter, and 67% of dark energy. Dark matter density inside galaxies, one proton mass per cubic centimeter, is about a million times bigger than the average in the universe. We still don't know what is dark matter. Neither known particles, like neutrinos, nor little black holes are viable candidates. The same can be said about more radical proposals like modifications of Newtonian gravity, so-called MOND theories. There were several proposals of dark matter particles. Axions, very light, very weakly coupled particles. Actually, I take part in one of the experiments at CERN in Geneva to look for these particles. There were several proposals of particles of about the proton mass, or slightly heavier, so-called WIMS, weakly interacting massive particles. But after 40 years of extensive research, all the experiments failed to find any hint in these directions. About 10 years ago, with my colleague and friend Hermann Nicolai from the Max Planck Institute for Gravitational Physics, also called Albert Einstein Institute, in Potsdam, Germany, we decided to look for something completely new. In 1981, Murray Gell-Mann, Nobel Prize laureate for the proposal of quarks as fundamental constituents of matter, noticed the intriguing relation of the particle content of the standard model, not fully known then, with a very distinguished theory formulated two years earlier, N equals A supergravity. The theory contains, besides standard model particles of spin one half, also graviton, it mixes gravity with particle physics, of spin two, and eight gravitinos of spin three halves. Therefore, this relation possibly points to the solution of the most difficult problem of fundamental theoretical physics, unifying gravity with particle physics. In the standard model sector, now fully known, the relation predicts the presence of six quarks, U, D, C, S, T, B, and six leptons, electron, muon, tau, and respective neutrinos, and absence of any other matter particles. And in fact, this prediction, confirmed by subsequent 35 years of intensive accelerator research, is the only known explanation of the number of matter particles in the standard model. However, the proposals of Gelman had several drawbacks. The main one being that the electric charge of the standard model particles was shifted by 1 over 6 with respect to the known values. For example, electron had charge minus 5 over 6 instead of known minus 1. Hermann Nicolai and me, we returned to the Gelman's idea and it turned out that it is possible to correct for the drawbacks of the original proposal by a modification of the scheme. The first one, the first conclusion, is the appearance of a new symmetry, so-called K of E10, an infinite symmetry with mathematics not yet fully understood. 
The second conclusion is very surprising. It is the fact that the eight gravitinos, presumably of the extremely large mass close to the Planck scale, are electrically charged. Six of them have charged plus minus one over three and two of them plus minus two over three. Let us recall that the Planck scale is the presumed energy at which gravity starts to have comparable strength as other interactions. Normally it is much weaker. Its value was estimated by Planck already around 1900 to be around 10 to the 18 uh, GeV, giga electron volts. That means billion of billion of proton masses. Many, many orders of magnitude beyond any imaginable accelerator energies. Since the theory combines naturally gravity with particle physics, it is also natural to assume that the mass scale involved is the Planck scale. We should emphasize that this conclusion is not valid for quarks about the masses of particles and leptons, uh, that because their masses can be much smaller, they are protected by a special property, so-called chirality. So only we expect gravitinos to have such, so, uh, such large masses. Let's return to the gravitinos predicted by the model. Even though they are extremely massive, they cannot decay, since there are no particles they could decay into. We propose, therefore, that two gravitino of charge plus minus two third, the other six have much lower abundance, could be dark matter particles of very different kind than anything proposed so far, and they provide a completely new alternative. Even though they are electrically charged, they can be dark matter candidates, because being so massive, they are extremely rare and therefore avoid the usual very tight constraints on the charge of dark matter constituents. Moreover, the electric charge of gravitino suggested a completely different way of trying to prove their existence. We pointed out in our first papers that neutrino detectors based on the scintillation could also be suitable for the detection of gravitinos. However, the search is made enormously difficult by its extreme rarity, presumably only one gravitino per 10,000 cubic kilometers, which is why there is no prospect of detection with currently available detectors. However, new giant underground detectors are either constructed or planned and realistic possibilities for searching for these particles are now opening up. Among all detectors, the Chinese Jiangmen Underground Neutrino Observatory, so-called Juno, now under construction, seems predestined for such a search. Uh, it aims to determine the properties of neutrinos, but since they interact extremely weakly with matter, neutrino detectors must have very large volumes. In the case of the Juno detector, in the south of China, this means 20,000 tons of an organic synthetic oil-like liquid, commonly used in chemical industry, with special additions, in a spherical vessel with a diameter of approximately 40 meters, with more than 17,000 photomultiplying around the sphere. Juno is scheduled to begin measurements in the second half of 2025, soon. We have recently published two papers, one in European Physical Journal and the second, together with collaborators from the Faculty of Chemistry at the University of Warsaw, in Physical Review Research. And these papers provide, a, in a sense, a way of detecting the proposed gravitinos. Uh, one is a general one and the second is very detailed one. So in the second paper, written together with, with our um, collaborators, the second paper presents a detailed analysis of the specific signatures that events caused by gravitinos could produce uh, in Juno, and also in future liquid argon detectors like Deep Underground Neutrino Experiment uh, done in the United States. In, it describes, the paper describes not only the theoretical background, both on the physics and chemistry sides, 
but also very, very detailed simulation of the possible signatures as a function of the velocity and track of a gravitino traveling through the oil vessel. The analysis had to face real physical and chemical challenges. We had to take into account the all backgrounds, possible backgrounds uh, and fake signals. And we provide the simulations of the signal in these papers and they had to take into account, as I said, many possible backgrounds, for example, decay of radioactive C14 present in the oil, dark count and efficiency of photomultipliers, absorptions of photons in oil, and etc. Et the simulations show, with the appropriate software, passage of a gravitino through the detector will leave a unique signal impossible to be wrongly identified with the passage of any of the presently known particles. It will be absolutely unique. The analysis combined physics and, and chemistry and sets new standards in terms of interdisciplinarity, combining two different areas, very different, elementary particle physics and the search for fundamental theory on one side, on one hand, and very advanced methods of modern quantum chemistry on the other. The detection of the super-heavy gravitinos would be absolutely a major step forward in the search for a unified theory of gravity and particles. Since gravitinos are predicted to have masses on the order of the Planck mass, their detection would be the first direct indication of physics near the Planck scale and could thus provide invaluable experimental evidence for a unification of the forces of nature. I'm waiting with great excitement for the data from the experiment and I hope very much that the gravitinos predicted theoretically in our paper really do exist. But time will tell. Thank you.